It was a legal spectacle never seen before in America, with potentially unprecedented political ramifications as well. Donald Trump, the former president and current presidential candidate, walking into a New York courtroom after being fingerprinted and being charged with 34 felonies. The charges stemming from a series of alleged hush money payoffs to an adult film star in hopes of avoiding scandals as he ran for president. He is the first former American president to face criminal charges. And today, before a judge in Manhattan criminal court, he pleaded not guilty. Afterward, his lawyers blasting the indictment. And though he has been defiant, one source described Mr. Trump today as very somber. It was the start of what will be a drawn-out process for the former president. And it's where we begin tonight with NBC's Garrett Hake. Garrett, good evening. Good evening, Lester. This history-making hearing lasted less than an hour. I was in the courtroom for what Mr. Trump himself described as a surreal experience, a former commander-in-chief, now a criminal defendant. Tonight, for the first time, a former American president arraigned on criminal charges. There he is. Former President Donald Trump with a clenched fist and a wave as he left his luxury Trump Tower apartment for a Spartan Manhattan courthouse. His motorcade tracked from the air on live television. As Mr. Trump posted, they are going to arrest me. Can't believe this is happening in America. The surreal sight as he walked inside flanked by Secret Service. Mr. Trump was processed behind closed doors with his fingerprints taken, but no mugshot. President Trump, will you come speak to us? Then silently walking President in to Trump. face a judge. No TV cameras allowed in the courtroom. Only these photos taken before the hearing, showing Mr. Trump seated with his attorneys. In the hearing, our first look at the charges, 34 felony counts for falsifying business records. The defendant repeatedly made false statements on New York business records. The case brought by Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg centers around the accounting of hush money payments that Trump fixer turned critic Michael Cohen says he made to Stormy Daniels in 2016 on behalf of Mr. Trump to conceal an extramarital encounter, which the former president denies. The indictment also referencing what appear to be hush money payments to Karen McDougal, who alleged an affair with Mr. Trump, and a $30,000 payment to a former Trump Tower doorman, who prosecutors allege claimed to have a story about a child Trump had out of wedlock. Both accusations that Mr. Trump has also previously denied. Falsifying business records is normally a misdemeanor, but in an untested legal gamble, Bragg is charging Mr. Trump with the lowest level felonies. The conduct I just described uh, and that which was charged by the grand jury is felony criminal conduct in New York State. Mr. Trump himself telling the judge his not guilty plea. If this man's name was not Donald J. Trump, there is no scenario we'd all be here today. Please understand that based on these charges. Mr. Trump's attorneys blasting the Democratic DA's case as a partisan vendetta. A state prosecutor is prosecuting a federal election law violation that doesn't exist according to federal election law officials. Tonight, Bragg defending the charges after federal prosecutors and Bragg's predecessor both declined to pursue any charges against Mr. Trump in this case. We have uh, had available to the office additional evidence uh, that was not in the office's possession prior to my time here. The bedrock, in fact, the basis for uh, business integrity and a well-functioning business marketplace is true and accurate record keeping. America first! Meanwhile, demonstrators clashing outside the courthouse. A pro-Trump protest organized by Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene confronted by a group of counter-protesters, including Democratic New York Congressman Jamal Bowman. Do your freaking job, Marjorie Taylor Greene. You don't need to be in New York City talking that nonsense. Go back to your district. We ducked into a car to hear her response. What was the message you wanted to send by being here today? They're not prosecuting President Trump. They're persecuting him. And it's all because he's the leading Republican candidate for the presidential election for 2024. And Gareth, the judge also had some stern words about some of the rhetoric that's been used surrounding this case. That's right, Lester. He warned attorneys on both sides to make sure both Mr. Trump or anyone else associated with this case refrain from using language that might incite violence or undermine the rule of law. It comes after Mr. Trump has repeatedly and personally attacked the district attorney Bragg on social media. Lester. All right, Garrett Haig, thank you. And joining me now is our senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett. Laura, 34 counts here. How strong does the state's case appear to be? Lester, there is a mountain of evidence offered by prosecutors in court papers today, but 
the fundamental question is whether any of it amounts to a crime. Expect to hear from Mr. Trump's attorneys attacking the way Bragg is using uncharged violations of federal campaign finance violations to bolster what is normally a state misdemeanor. It appears no court has ever ruled that that's allowed, and it's what makes the case legally risky. And we can't take this in isolation. There are other investigations coming right now. That's right, uh, including that special counsel investigation where just today a federal court of appeals unanimously rejected Mr. Trump's bid to block a number of his senior aides from testifying in front of a grand jury examining his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. All right, Laura Jarrett, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.